the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. On Wednesday night in this space, there were about 35 or so people who gathered to pray the Stations of the Cross. You can look around this nave and see that there are hangings, different pieces of artwork done by various artists, taking those who pray the Stations through the last days of Jesus's life. And as we walked the Stations of the Cross, one person held our cross and someone else shined a flashlight on the cross, illuminating the cross as the lights were dim in this space, much like they are this evening. And as we clustered and spread out as we felt comfortable, what I noticed on each of these pieces of art, the continuity was the shadow of the cross cast on each hanging. The shadow sticks with me. Carl Jung says, the shadow is a moral problem that challenges the whole ego personality for no one can become conscious of the shadow without considerable moral effort. To become conscious of it involves recognizing the dark aspects of the personality as present and real. This act is the essential condition for any kind of self-knowledge. The Swiss psychiatrist wrote this in 1951, over 70 years ago now. He explored how we humans are prone to hiding the parts of ourselves that we don't like. He said we separate ourselves psychologically from the behaviors, feelings, and thoughts that we consider to corrupt or sully us. Maybe it's aggressive thoughts, whimsy of staggering fear, shame-filled or irrational urges. We may see this shadow side present itself in certain behaviors. Maybe I find myself judging people harshly because I don't want to be judged or criticized myself. Maybe I'm exerting power over someone who's my subordinate to work out my own feelings of powerlessness. Rather than admit our wrong, Maybe we paint ourselves as overworked or feeling like victims. Or maybe I am living into unchecked bias and prejudice. I offer most of those in a first person so that I don't put it necessarily on you, but maybe those behaviors resonate with you as things you have seen or done or lived. As Jesus says in the Gospels, you know, it's easy to see the speck in our neighbor's eye, and yet the log protruding from our own goes undetected. Alexander Solzhenitsyn said, if only it was all so simple, if only there were evil people somewhere insidiously committing evil deeds, and it were necessary only to separate them from the rest of us and destroy them. But the line dividing good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. 
and who is willing to destroy a piece of his own heart? Friends, we must look at, name, and reflect together on the messiness of my life, of your life, of our collective experience where we find ourselves in 2022. Avoiding the shadows does not make them evaporate. Rather, when we neglect the shadows, we continue to live blindly, walking wounded and hurting others. And in this, remember that Jesus is calling us to change and grow, to heal and serve. And without reflecting upon our shadows, how can we do this? How can we wake up? How can we wake up instead of turning our face away from those things that we'd rather deny? This Good Friday service is a start. This Good Friday service is a space for honest dialogue, hearing hard stories. And Holy Week is an invitation to deep, reflective work. not living into the ideals and unrealistic hopes that we place on ourselves and others, but the real. As Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So maybe you're sitting here in the nave or sitting at home wondering how this psychological babble relates to the passion of Jesus. On Good Friday, we stand, we sit, we kneel, exposed, laid bare. There are no adornments. We come as we are. Good Friday is part of our liturgical rhythm in a year, and yet Good Friday is an invitation to get real, to meditate, to unveil the shadows, our unchecked bias in word and deed. Earlier today, we heard a bit of a different translation of the Passion. We didn't hear the entirety that the choir chanted so beautifully tonight. We just heard John chapter 19. A seminary professor from Seminary of the Southwest, where Becky and I studied, is named Dan Jocelyn Simatowski. And he is a content area expert in church history and on Christian Jewish relations. He and a rabbi named Neil Bloomfeld and others have had honest, deep, reflective conversations about the tensions and violence that have emerged from the scriptures we read on Good Friday in which the Jews are named, blamed, and shamed. Some of this comes from a translation misrepresentation. The Judeoi, which is the Greek word used in the scripture, is usually translated in most of our Bibles as the Jews, but it has a broader meaning it could point to bigger and different people groups. In the first century, Galilee, Judea area, that term, Judeo, could have been the leadership of Judea. It could have been that they were the influencers and not 
every single person in the region, not all Jews. You see, Jesus was critical of how he saw the leadership of Judea being run by Roman rule. And so he frequently would focus on those issues that didn't benefit the people as a whole. He was deeply attentive to injustice. Jesus was not critical of the Jews or of Judaism in general. Rather, he was a faithful, deeply faithful Jew. He proclaimed a renewal of Jewish life. And so when we misunderstand one word, it can be used and twisted. And we might miss out on a key point of pain and sadness in this story. Jesus' betrayal by the leaders of Judea who were threatened to lose their own positions. And so when we use the term Jew, it has been used as a source of targeting and violence against our Jewish brothers and sisters, many times during Holy Week. In our church, in the Episcopal Church, for 100 years, we have faithfully contributed support and prayers to our siblings in the Diocese of Jerusalem and in the Middle East. And so the Good Friday offering today will go to the Anglican Communion of the Middle East and Jerusalem. But what else are we to do on this Good Friday? How are we to live differently in light of the shadow? Good Friday calls us to real and honest reflection as we will pray the solemn collects in just a moment. When our eyes are open to those spaces of blindness and sin, we're called to turn our backs on them and repent. And in doing so, we draw near to God. We draw near to God who sees and knows all of us. While we may see a shadow, a cross-shaped shadow on the beauty of our lives, God sees all of you and knows all of you. God welcomes all of you. And pondering that, I pray that each of us can adopt a mindset of curiosity and wonder, not fear of that shadow, but to wonder and listen to those spaces of discomfort, to pray that the Holy Spirit emboldens each of us to stay in that awkward space so that we do not feel so alone. Perhaps we can also pray what can be learned as we understand more about the shadow of each of our lives. And who else can we tell of our story? Who else can we be honest with? Who else needs to hear the invitation to authentic and deep being? And as God is ever reconciling us to God's self, what might God's healing presence bring into this space for you and for me and for us? While we know there is darkness, We also have the assurance that the darkness cannot overpower the strong light of Jesus the Christ. Amen.